That's uh, a notable picture with Foos staring at teammates. Who will Foos' teammates be next year for BYU basketball? And our crew right now upstairs is like, okay, we have five dudes we can show. <laughs> a little Outside bit of Dallin, maybe. Yeah, we're, we're waiting on a couple of other guys <laughs> to get to Pro Bowl and to be officially announced by BYU before we can add some more in. Uh, one guy we can certainly mention is former sharpshooter Jonathan Tavernari, who is with us on BYU Sports What Station. up, Don? Great to have you back in Studio B for more day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am eternally grateful that NIL was not around back when I played. You would have been gone? Because I would have been gone, and I wouldn't be able to be here with you guys and have the legacy that I have and that I built here at BYU. Um, because what it, just the, the, the way things are right now to me is unrecognizable. And, but that's the way it is, right? And, uh, and so here we are a part of it. So. And here we are where the highest paid NBA assistant coach is now the head coach of BYU basketball. And it, I mean, looking at all of the candidates, and I knew like I understood when he interviewed and he was part of the process when they hired Mark Pope. Um, but the way that he climbed, let's just say that the coaching ladder in the NBA, there was no way that I'm like, there is no way, there's no way. And any of the three levels or whatever you want to go out of, he is not leaving the NBA. He's a head coach in waiting. I mean, how many interviews did he have to be the head coach? Woj said he interviewed for at least nine teams the last several years. My goodness. And so, you know, word is that, you know, also with, with the Nets, he might have turned it down. Also, you know, it's here, you know, he said, she said, but he was right on the mix, you know, and, and for him to then choose BYU. I, I, I didn't see that coming at all. JT, he's locked in a four-star recruit who flipped from a different school. We can't mention his name until he goes official with BYU because, we, you know, we got to be compliant, all of that, all Does those that rules. Does that apply to me as well? <laughs> nope. So we, we're the ones who can't do can it. I, can I talk about a conversation I had on the phone last night with said person? Sure. So, Tell us, what'd you learn? Uh, uh, not now, but I think we're talking about the same person. Yes. Yes. So already he's got <clears throat> his own boots on the ground. We think yeah. he might be in Utah today before Phoenix plays the Timberwolves. Unsure, we don't know, but probably. But the way things are going, he's flying back <laughs> and Minnesota forth. Minnesota for. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How would you assess what Kevin Young has done in a very challenging, unique situation in the, what's now, eight days that he's been BYU's head right. coach? Uh, first of all, the press conference was awesome. You got a feel for who he is, and you know I was I, I was grateful to be a part of that and be there. Um, I will say this, and I w it was interesting reading the perspective of the fans on what they think it's most important. And I think all of those perspectives are valid. Um, I would personally say that I agree with you. We need Kevin here, more importantly than than assistant coaches, right? However, there's a situation with uh, Phoenix is still playing in the playoffs, so. The very next thing is, you know, having a new assistant coach just recently hired and officially, you know, announced. Um, I think that's the very next most important thing. So that guy can start talking with recruits, can start reaching out to current players that are on a portal, uh, trying to bridge the gap that Kevin cannot be 100% in right now because of the situation the Suns, no, the Suns are in. Um, but then after that, I would agree with, you know, the comment about the Warriors and having the players on. Um, you know, it is interesting. You know, I, I, I personally feel and my thinking is it might be a little bit. E I thought it was going to be a little bit easier to get Richie back, you know, than Dallin, you know, but having Dallin being at the press conference, I thought it was interesting. I thought it was a positive note means that, you know, he is he's invested on, you know, considering here. Um, I don't like the picture that Steve Ashworth put, you know, of them golfing. And so I hope that Steve Ashworth shot, you know, like a 90 on that round. <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah. but, Brother but, Ashworth. But what I will say is, you know, how can you m mitigate, I don't know if that's the right word, but how can you calm the waters and until Kevin gets here? I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I think there's multiple ways that you can approach that. But to me, that's the number one question. What can you do between today and when Kevin is officially done with the Suns to make sure that you build the roster for next year, you keep the players, um, you are also investing in the portal, which is something you have to do every offseason now to make sure that you know those 13 scholarships that you have are filled. And I love what you said. Have one or two spots to be flexible because you never know when you may be able to get you know, one of those, those types of point guards that we have a couple of years back with Mark Pope that can come in, can be a, a, a one-year guy, a one-year... Like a Brandon Avery. A Brandon Avery. Exactly. Yeah. 
Um, and, and, Frankly, um, an Alex Barcelo type. Well, and, and yeah. I, for, I forgot the name of the, the last one that we had that ended up oh. coming off the bench. Rudy, Rudy Williams. Williams. Rudy, yeah, yeah. Somebody like that that can mm -hmm. come in and be a, 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 a one-year rental on somebody that buys into the, the philosophy of what we live. Everybody's a one-year rental now. You know and, what I mean? And At least that. one. And the crazy thing about that is long are the days. Like, I remember when we were here together and we were, you were getting all of this started. Yeah, it was me. Well, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> like, you know, take a little I bit of wish, credit. I wish, I wish. But it was about education. It was about, like, building a community. It was about coming to BYU, which, as I said, like, I'm grateful for it, that I didn't have the temptation to have to deal with that, um, of going for four, five, six, seven hundred thousand. 700,000. I, you know, looking back after my freshman, sophomore, and junior year, I could have gotten a bag. I couldn't have gotten a gym or bag, but I could have gotten paid because of how I played. Uh, but now my relationship with fans, my relationship with the media, my relationship in the BYU community in Cougar Nation, it's priceless. I'm grateful I never had to, to, to deal with that because now it's not about all of that. It's about how much can you get paid. I was in shock on a tweet that I read about Ali Khalifa that said, you know, per his agent, that he went to Louisville, you know, with, with this NIL money. And I'm like, long, go long gone are the days about the, the, the pageantry and the way that college sports do and the rivalries. It's all about who can get paid the most now and, you know, and, and where can you go from there. I'm hoping, and it's almost impossible at that age, it, having been that age, to, it, but not in their situation, of knowing, hey, if you can get like 75 or 80% of that amount of money, but here you're going to get a thousand percent of other stuff for the rest of your, your life. Your network's yeah. going to be incredible. Can you can you sacrifice that extra X amount somewhere else to understand legacy, relationships, business, family, uh, the, the 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 honor of being here? Like, can that settle in someone's mind at that age? I'm hoping it can. Um, it took Congress almost two years to get to a point that they're going to ban TikTok. And I don't think that this newer generation is going to get to a point of that anytime soon. And everything that you hit, you know, um, the way that Mark Pope talked about NIL, you know, like with, with Trey and having his clothing line um, with, um, you know, our African brothers on the team that created foundations. Look at Gideon George. Gideon George's he did. influence. Gideon gets it. Yep. Which is why I firm believe, being an international player myself, and I know my numbers speak for themselves, what I did here, in terms of impact off the court, I will say that what Gideon has done, you know, only only doesn't trump um, Krasimir Chosich because what Gideon has done to impact other people's lives is mm. incredible. And back home. Back home, yeah. exactly. But yeah. I don't think everybody's going to have that mentality. I think right now, it's rare, including you know, BYU is a very special place, and you know, I'm extremely excited about this recruit um, that you know, he who shall not be named. <laughs> um, you, know, you know, and so you know. And the reason why I would say is I had a really good conversation with him. And, and I've spoke highly of him, of his style of play. You said and on he, Twitter, yeah. you believe he's a bigger get than a Colin hundred, Chandler. A, a hundred percent. Which is quite the opinion. It, it, it is, yeah. right? And, and I will say this, though, with my basketball takes. Um, I say some crazy stuff. What? But, but I'm, not that, I'm not that wrong a lot. <laughs> I, you know? And here's what I say. You know, you look at somebody where they are and where they can be. And, and talking with him, I showered him with compliments, not because I want to make sure that he feels comfortable, he feels welcome, but because it's the truth. Now, he and I are going to do a few things, and, and I'm going to try to share my experience with him, but I truly, I firm, I firm believe that. And, and he, to me, the key to, to Kevin, you know, and you mentioned that, is it three, four years? What does long-term mean? To me, the long-term success of, of, of Kevin Young, which Mark Pope did a really pretty good job setting up, you know, with the, the high school kids where you can have them here for two, three, four years in a row minimum. Look at Dallin, looking at Richie, and looking at, you know, Colin is not here anymore, but looking at this, you know, this kid coming in. It was going that direction. But, but I think that's the key. And you get guys that are familiar with BYU, that they buy into it, and then hopefully we can find some of those kids where, you know, money is important, but they see above the next four years of their lives. The, the, the recruit uh, and, and soon signee that we're mentioning, UCLA told him, we think you're the next Jaime Jaquez, who's on the Miami Heat. Like, that would be awesome. That's a fantastic And that's comparison. a good comp, right? Yeah. Well, and, and I told him, I said, look. Mick Cronin is, is no, like, no soft opinion either. He's and, not going to give And I you told him, I said, with your yeah. body and the way you play the game, you are a legit – 
He's a legit two, three inches taller than me. Hey, I guess BYU does have more than uh, one uh, guy above 6'6". Six, six. Now, the, when the signing... That's true. He's 6'7". He's 6'7". He's six, seven. He's six, seven. He's six, seven. And, and I say this. I'm like, I'm like, take it what I say with a grain of salt. But the way he plays is very, very similar to how I played. Mm. But he's much more explosive, right? He is taller. He, he can jump in ways that I could never do it, even in my best. And so, and I told him, I said, you're the prototypical NBA player where you're a 6'7", 6'8", 6'9", you can put the ball on the Athletic floor, can shoot. you can catch and shoot, you got a very high shot. I'm like, you have, like we say it in Brazil, we, you have the knife and the cheese in your hand, all you do is slice it. And he has all <laughs> I of never the, learned that one on my mission. Well, uh, <laughs> it, it, it may be a, a Sao Paulo thing. <laughs> but, but he has all of the tools in place to be a phenomenal player, not only here at BYU, but also to play at the next level. I firmly believe that. You look at guys like Tobias Harris, um, and I know that Rudy Gay is a little bit taller, but he fits that prototype yeah. where yep. he is lean, he is long, he is quick, he's agile, he can shoot the leather off the ball. And so I, I've always... Athletic stretch four, man. And I yep. said it when we didn't get him at the beginning. I'm like, we are missing on a big-time player, a big-time player. And, and, you know, and sometimes, you know, the men upstairs, when you open a wrong door, you know, he leads you to the right one because you're doing things the right way. I'm so happy that he's going to be here. I think he's going to be fantastic. Let's finish up with this. Going back to Dallin Hall, who we joked was playing golf with Stephen Ashworth, and we hope Stephen double bogeyed every hole, <laughs> and Dallin had a terrible time on the golf course. And <laughs> well, we love you, Dallin. Coming back. Love you, Dallin. We, want, we love Dallin here. People yeah. are upset because Boy, is we it, love what? Dallin. Yeah. Boy, is it better in Provo. <laughs> All the golf down wants in Provo, certainly. There's That's some the sort NI of deal, deal we need. that we can work out. Um, I digress. But no question, some other big-time programs are going to offer him bigger money. Yeah. Hey, like that, is, that is going to happen. But as Jaron was referencing, if BYU can give you 70% of that number or 80% of that number, and it feels like the Royal Blue Collective is they're, doing that. They're being very competitive okay? with Dallas. Like these aren't numbers. like yes. ho-hum numbers. Yes. The, the collective is throwing out 70 to 80% in, in terms of what Duke and Creighton can offer, yeah. like, is that enough to come back? Because I will put BYU's network up against anybody. Like, Stanford and the Ivy League schools are probably that next elite level tier. BYU's not far off from that as far as the network goes. And, and I agree with that. I think it goes. And you got a coach that can develop NBA talent. And, and I think that those two are the keys. You know, at who is going to be the salesman that, that gets that delivered? I love the fact that Craig Cusick heads up the basketball part of the collective. Um, I think, you know, I, I do, would, would Craig have transferred for more money? I don't know, right? Would he have been the type of player that performed and got that? Um, but the way I look at Craig is the way that he developed his relationship with Ryan and Qualtrics and his business and his business perspective. He wouldn't be in the position he is today if he didn't stay at BYU. And, 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 and that's my point, right? And I think that when you, you have to figure out a way to hit the nail right on the head when you're talking about these things, about your legacy, about your network, I cannot tell you the amount of, of, of job offers and opportunities that I have today because I speak the languages that I speak and also because they're like, oh, man, I loved what you did your senior year where you decided to come off the bench and be unselfish and be a team guy. Oh, I loved watching you play. And so connections that, to be frank, they go above and beyond just Provo, Utah and Utah and the Silicon Slopes. It's a, it's a worldwide network that we have access to, and I think that you need to tap into that. I can tell you that someone in business talked to Richie and Dallin this week about this exact perspective, by the way. I can tell you that. I love that those conversations are happening. Yes. It's yes. critical. Because I'll say this, you know, not all of us, and I'll speak, I, I did play professionally for, you know, about a decade in Europe, and so I, I get it. But now that I'm in the, I'm in the, in the business world, I will say this. Um, not everybody's going to have a chance to, to make, you know, to make, a living the way Jimmer, you know, has done or the way Brennan Davis has done. Um, you know, you're going to have to figure out a way, what are you going to do after you retire? And, 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 and I understood that. And I saw the vision that I needed to stay here so I could stay connected to BYU. Um, I could stay connected to the network, you know, to be able to have the relationships that I do, that I can pick up the phone and I can call, you know, a couple of billionaires and I can call guys that have made, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars in transaction and say, I need your advice on this or I need your guidance on that. Um, those things are priceless, but you have to look at the bigger picture, right? It's not only about this life. You know, you got to look at the etern the grand plan of salvation, yes, yes. you know, and, and have a, an internal view of all of that. JT, great to have you on the show, man. Exciting hey, times ahead for BYU basketball. Basketball and the gospel. What else can I do? Where else can I do that? <laughs> this is BYU TV, baby. Let's go. It.